How's it going everybody? I'm really excited about this video because I've been wanting to deploy ESXi since this series got kicked off, which is really the only way we're going to be able to make anything happen in this series, right, is ESXi. I'm going to show you the diagram, show you exactly how we're going to deploy ESXi and all the details behind it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the desktop. So one of the first things we needed to go ahead and do is understand what it is we're going to be deploying. So we have ESXi, right? We have our first host, which is going to be vert-host1. I'm going to deploy ESXi 6.7.update1. Uh, update one. And what that's going to basically allow us to do is we're going to deploy it. And I'm going to deploy a total of seven NICs, so seven network adapters to it. I'm going to give it 16 gigs of RAM. I'm going to give it a 100 gig hard drive, all that good stuff. And that's going to be mimicked on host two and host three once we get to deploy those, which will be further on down the road. I'm not going to waste your time deploying host two and host three since they're already going to be already ready to go. So we're going to deploy that, and then I'm going to walk you guys through the process. Installing ESXi is actually really, really basic. So not a whole lot of, of anything needs to be really dove into. Why am I deploying so many network adapters? That's a common question that I get. So for the management network, so the blue line right here, and for the red line right here, we're going to have two network adapters in each one of these networks. The reason for that is for high availability. Because if we don't, when we get into vCenter server and we start playing around with it in more advanced deployments, we're going to get a warnings for this type of stuff. Plus, I also want to play around with iSCSI multipath down the road. So enough talking about what we're going to go ahead and do. Let's jump over to our server and actually deploy an ESXi host. All right. So in a previous video, when we deployed our Microsoft AD server right here, I was mentioning how when we go to roll out the server or roll out a virtual machine, what we're going to run into is the individual file folders right here for the virtual disks. They'll eventually grow when files get, or data gets written to the individual virtual disk because this is considered a thin provision hard drive. This hard drive is thin provisioned. So as you can see, data did get written to it. I just wanted to point out that real quick. All right, so I'm going to come over here to home and we want to deploy a new VM. So I'm going to click on create a new virtual machine, click on next, and we need to determine where the, uh, the disk is. So I'm going to go to browse, and I'm going to come over here to this PC, and I've actually got a drive already mapped for this. So I'm going to double click on here, it's going to be the version of ESXi that we're going to go ahead and deploy. So I'm going to go ahead and click on open, and I'm going to click on next. It's going to ask me where do I want to install it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to the D drive, expand the D drive. Come down here to Workstation VMs. I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to add a new folder. I'm going to call this guy vert-host1. I'm going to click on OK. So we can see Workstation VMs. Let me go over here and navigate up to Workstation VMs. We should say, we should say vert-host1, which is what it does. I'm going to call this guy here vert-host1. Click Next. The hard drive size on this guy is going to be 100 gigs out of the gate. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And I'm going to customize the hardware. I'm going to give this guy 16 gigs of RAM. I'm going to go ahead and give him four total CPUs. And on the network adapter, the first two are going to be connected directly to the physical network. I'm going to click on add a network adapter. Click on finish. This one is also going to be bridged, which is going to be our management network. Then I'm going to add another one here, which will, and the rest of these here are just going to be added as we go along. We can adjust them as we need to. Just like that. So we have one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Five, six. I need to add one more. Click on finish. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure all that looks good, which it does. I'm going to click on close and we can see that everything's been mapped. I'm going to go ahead and not power this virtual machine after creation. I'm going to click on finish. Give that a couple seconds to be created. There it goes. And then you can see. Network adapter one and two are bridged automatic. Then we're going to have another VM or another network adapter that's going to be used for virtual machines that are going to get deployed inside of ESXi. Then we're going to have storage. 
then we're going to have vMotion, so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and power on this virtual machine. Give that a couple seconds to do its thing. And it should begin the process of booting up to ESXi. And wait for it. There it goes. All right, so now we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to click in here and hit the enter key to kick off the process. Now we are in a very much a hurry up and wait scenario. So we're going to have to wait patiently for this to boot up and do its thing. It's going to do load the ESXi installer. And then I will bring you guys back in here in just a moment when everything is at the point where we can start working with it. So I'm actually going to press Control Alt. And that's going to get, release my mouse. I'm going to pause the video until we're ready to go. And there's, there's going to be some interaction we're going to have to do. So we are now at the process where we can begin doing the install. So I'm going to click inside of there. And I'm going to hit the Enter key. I'm going to press F11 to accept the end user license agreement. It's going to scan for hard drives, working in install ESXi, that type of stuff. Give that a couple seconds to do its scan. It should find a 100 gig hard drive, which it does. Excellent. Hit the Enter key. And we have to specify a keyboard layout, US default. And then what is the password for root, the root user? So I'm going to type in capital P, at sign SSW0RD. Tab down. Same thing. Over again. Hit the Enter key. Give that a couple seconds. It's going to look to see if everything else is good to go. The right amount of RAM, the right amount of CPUs. Okay, everything looks good. It says the disk will be repartitioned. Awesome. That's what I want to see. Press F11 to install. And it's going to go through the installation process now. Now, the cool thing about this is that the steps that I literally just walked you through are the exact same steps, no lie, to a real physical deployment. So if you have ESXi on a USB flash drive and you want to boot, create a bootable USB drive and plug that in the back of the server, hey, guess what? It'll work the exact same way. It's the beautiful part about this deployment. So we're just going to wait patiently for it to finish doing its install. I'm going to press Control-Alt to break out of it. I'm going to pause until that's 100% complete. So with the install complete, so awesome job on installing ESXi. I'm going to click inside of it and hit the Enter key to reboot. It's going to take a few minutes to reboot, and we're going to be able to boot off of ESXi. So this will take a few minutes to do. Now, a couple of little things that I want to point out to you at the bottom of the screen here, at the bottom of the, of the window. If you notice here, we have the hard drive sitting right here. We have a CD DVD drive, oh, it just resized, DVD drive right here. Then we have NIC1, NIC2. NIC 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then we have our Seagate RSS backup, which is the actual it's the actual hard drive that's physically attached to the server. A volume D here, but it's actually an external hard drive that's plugged into the server. I'm going to pause until this is fully done, and then we will go ahead and can finish configuring it based off of our topology. All right, so our server is now booted, so I'm going to go ahead and actually quick reference the topology real quick. So what we're going to go do is we're going to give this guy dot 22 as the address. So that's what we're going to configure with that. And we're going to give him a default gateway of 10.255.1.1. And our DNS server is going to be 10.255.1.21 because that's going to be our AD server. So I'm going to go ahead and connect back over to him. So I'm going to come in here, click inside, press F2, and then authenticate like so and then after a couple seconds that should respond I'm gonna come down here to configure management network and then on network adapters I'm gonna click on this guy and I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna hit the spacebar to hit the X so that we use VM NIC 0 and VM NIC 1 at the same time so they're both gonna be active active hit the enter key to do that come down here to IPv4 I'm gonna come down here to set the IP address so I'm gonna type in here 172 excuse me, 10.255.1.22 slash 24 mask and then 10.255.1.1. I'm going to hit the enter key. Now the VLAN is optional, which basically allows you to set a VLAN ID for your management network. We're not doing that, just so you're aware. I'm going to come down here to DNS configuration. The DNS server in this case here will be 10.255.1.21. The alternate DNS server is not going to be configured. I'm going to call this vert-host1.lab.local. And I'm hit the enter key. I'm going to press escape, and that's going to restart the management network. I'm going to say yes. 
and there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go up, open up RDP to my other server, which is our DNS server. I'm going to click on the server manager, click on tools, and then DNS. And inside of DNS, if I expand lab.local, we can see vert host one .lab .local. So we've got that already situated. So we should be able to ping from, from this particular, or we're going to go back over to our main server, so this guy right here, and I'm going to come down here to test management network, hit the enter key, and I should be able to ping every one of those, I should get okays from everything. So I should be able to ping that, which I do, should be able to ping my DNS server, and I should also be able to resolve vert host one .lab .local. I'm going to hit the enter key, and I'm going to go ahead and escape. Guess what? There we go. Now, one little other piece of uh, detail that you're going to want to know. Let me go ahead and log back in real quick. And if I need to reset anything network-wise, I come over here to Network Restore. I can restore the network settings, which is will reset them to their defaults. If in the event that I need to change the keyboard default or doing anything troubleshooting-wise, like if I need to enable the uh, ESXi sh uh, shell, or the uh, SSH, or anything like that, we can do those details as well. If I need to look at the system logs, I can look at the system logs. When we go to join ESXi to vCenter server, one of the things you're going to get is a pop-up of the SSL thumb from the SHA-1. And normally what I do is I verify the last four digits, so E5, Charlie 4. So I'll verify the last four here just to make sure that's the right thumbprint. If you need to reset anything, you can just come down here and reset it. Okay, so now that we've got that understood. I'm going to log back in, but I'm going to go, this time I'm going to press on F12 for the shutdown restart. So I'm going to go and press on F12. I'm going to authenticate. And now I can do one of two things. I can either do an F2 for shutdown. Right, if I need to shut down the server, I can shut down the server. If I want to restart it for whatever reason, I can press F11 to do that. And if I hit the space bar with this option, forcefully terminate VMs, if any, if I space bar and put an X inside of that, and I hit F11 to restart, and it's going to actually force power off the VMs that are on the host running. And then it's going to allow the reboot. It's going to be a graceful restart. I always recommend if you're going to shut down the host for any reason, whether it's a restart or it's a shutdown, make sure you do it through the DCUI. You can access the DCUI through the methods we're using here, or you can do it through SSH or whatever other method you want to use. Or you physically can walk to the host. Sometimes you can use KVM to get there as well. But regardless of the process, this is basically what you would need to do. I'm going to press uh, cancel and I'm going to exit out. So now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to jump over to this server and I'm going to then pull up, and let me go ahead and minimize this and minimize this. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Firefox and then I'm going to come in here and type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash of vert dash host one dot lab dot local and we get a pop-up warning, DNS resolved correctly, come down here, accept risk, and continue. And then we get the little pop-up warning that, you know, we have a, we get the login, and there we go. So that's basically where we have that. So I'm going to come in here and type in root and the password. I'm going to save the login information, and we're good to go there. I'm also going to bookmark this page. And so, yep, I'm going to go ahead and bookmarks toolbar. I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, host1, click on done, and there it is, host1, so I'll be able to connect to him whenever I want to. Then it asks me, hey, do you want to join the customer experience improvement program? We'd really like it if you would. I'm going to say no because this is a lab. I don't really care. Click on OK, and there we go. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this one because we don't need that there. We have host1. So now I'll be able to actually build this out as we're building it up. So we'll be able to just click on the different bookmarks as we're doing all of our setup. I'm going to stop here because I want to go through and show you guys what the vSphere web UI looks like when we look at it from a dedicated video for it. So I'm not going to waste any more time going through this rollout. I'm going to show you guys how this stuff works in an upcoming video 
and all those details that go along with that. We'll do a vSphere overview and go from there. So I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. And until next time, guys, take it easy.